Hello? Hi, this is Roy. I'm uh, with Pete. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm the one that, you know, delivered your pizza, and yeah. my, my manager wanted me to call and apologize, because I peed on your For door. For what? I peed on your door. Why did you do that? Because I know it's stupid. I was just upset about the tip, and I, I just I thought it'd be funny to pee in the door, and I was bragging to my coworkers about it, and the manager overheard, and I'm sorry. Okay, so what kind of tip were you expecting? You're bringing pizza to someone's door, and it was $24, and I gave you $3 tip. So how much do you think that you should have gotten? Maybe 5 I mean, if you'd like, I could drive back out there, and you can give me the extra $2. Are you kidding right now? No, ma'am. Can I speak with your manager? He's actually in the bathroom right now. This is a joke. No. But I really am sorry hey, about the urine. Go look on the front door and see if the guy peed on the damn door because he said his tip wasn't good enough. So he peed on the door. I gave him a $3 tip. And he said his tip wasn't good enough and he was bragging to his coworkers and his manager heard him. So he's calling to apologize. And I asked him if it was a joke. $3 not very good, really, on a $24 order. Um, I always tip pizza people only $3. Like, you're driving pizza that... Uh, you weren't my waiter. You didn't. You didn't serve me anything. You didn't. You you just brought pizza. Gas would have been maybe two dollars to get here. I maybe, just hope you didn't do that. Maybe it's your attitude that that makes people pee on your door. It's basically your fault. My attitude? Are you mental? Well, listen to yourself. I'm just. Are you I'm, mental? I'm, I'm calling to apologize. Did for he everything. pee for real? I'm sorry. He's just playing. No. Did he pee? Huh? Well, my husband's on his way over there, so he's gonna. We're gonna press charges now. Why would he do that? So th thank you for um, letting us know, but we're gonna go ahead and press charges. Oh well, I don't think it's illegal to pee on your door. It is very illegal because you're peeing on my property and you're disrespecting my home. Well, I thought you. I don't know. I, I've never been there. I thought your husband said that it it was there was no pee on the door. That well, he's on his way over there now. He's heated. Like, you don't pee on somebody's property. You just don't do Listen, that. I mean, I'm I'm glad that you're being honest, but that's disrespectful. And we're going to press charges. And thank you for calling me. Sure. And I'm my husband's coming over there now to get the employee's names that you've told. And we're going to go file a, a, a lawsuit against okay. right now because that's disrespectful. Like, you're, that's not good customer service. Whatever oh, my you, God. Be quiet for a minute. Listen, I'm a prank caller. I'm not with pee Who pees on a door? Get real. Come on. What? You, you know I did. How did you even get my number? I called Pizza Babe! Hut. <laughs> yeah, you better stop him. Don't let him go beat anyone up. Because I'm just a prank caller. I live in Washington. How did you even get this number? I called and I said, Hey, I'm your corporate office. Give me all your phone numbers. And they did. They're really stupid there. It's not their fault. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're really stupid, but you're also, like, really <laughs> sick for doing that. Like... Is this what you do for a living? Is just prank call people? No, no. I, I just uh, I I don't have a girlfriend, and I get really lonely. And it was like, you don't have a girlfriend. You're lonely. Like seriously, like I I what the hell? Cause there ain't no pee out here. There ain't no. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause I I don't live in the state of Iowa. I, I'm I, I don't. Okay, see, let me call him. Cause if you got him so riled up, he might be trying to do something to somebody up there. Oh shit. Let me just yeah. yeah. Let me call him right now. Okay, you better do that. He, all right. Thanks, man. You're awesome. I wish you were my girlfriend. We just tuned into the Snowplow Show. Yes. That's when we realize that we're in luck. We can't wait till the prank calls begin. When Brad makes landlords angry, we're listening to the Snowplow Show. When psycho complainers get accused, we're listening to the Snowplow Show. Meanwhile, Brad is drinking for locals. Cactus. We'll convert rooms into pools and we'll get dark shit in our hair and we'll install cameras in cacti and spy on the town of Paradise Valley. And we'll call up HOAs and I know that we'll laugh. And we'll give snake eyes to those who don't And that's my life on PLA 
Well, that's just life from PLA. Cactus. And that's just life from PLA. Cactus. And that's just life from PLA. Cactus. We'll tear off people's roughs. Cactus. We'll harass some more Santas. Cactus. We'll kill some people's lawns. Cactus. We'll flush coffee beans down the toilet. <laughs> um. I. 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 This one goes out to Michelle's tweets on Twitter. Cactus! This one's for Sensei Doug. Cactus! We also listen to Hobo Souls. Hell yeah. Cactus! Hang up the phone. Cactus! PLA people, phone losers of America. Cactus! PLA people, but we're not desperate hobos. Cactus! PLA people, phone losers of America. Cactus! Hey everybody, this is the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Brad. This show is brought to you by Rhino Knife, Boca Recovery Center, Kuraz, Crooked Alligator, and High School Graduate. Those are some of the Patreon sponsors. Thanks everybody for supporting the show. And if you don't support the show, you're a piece of garbage. You're a goddamn freeloader. Why don't you go sign up for the show at patreon.com slash phone losers or phone losers.com slash support. Thank you to some of the new people who've signed up. Joshua Y, Reese B, and Kodiak B. I have no announcements today. You know, go to the San Jose meetup and stuff. That's all. Link in the show notes, maybe, if I remember. Maybe when I don't have announcements, I'll play voicemails on the beginning of the show. How would you guys like that? I know a few of you would absolutely love that. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to play a voicemail from Tim Henson's show. He does the Distorted View podcast, which is definitely on my top three favorite podcasts right now. Somebody left this for him on Friday's show. And also, second... Uh, at the end of the voicemail show on Brad's last snowplow show, um, he was talking about possibly prank calling your mom, and I think that would be awesome. If you can please send Brad your mom's phone number, mm. maybe work out some kind of prank that you could do and you could both complain on the show. I, uh, my first reaction is no, you leave my mommy alone, but I kind of want to hear Brad prank call my mom. <laughs> I think we can work something out. I will. I might get. I think I can trust Brad with my mom's phone number. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, that's a possibility. I'm going to talk to Brad about that. And he's never talked to me about it. Tim always says he's going to do things, and he never does. So I'm excited at the possibility of getting to prank call Tim's mom because I feel like I know her. You know, he he talks about her all the time. She's on the show sometimes. She reads fucked up Craigslist ads and stuff. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Come on, Tim. Give me your mom's number. And I know it's the grandma challenge, but Tim's mom is old as fuck. So she's like a grandma. She's one of those really old moms. She had Tim when she was 60 or something. So to convince Tim that I will be gentle with his mother, I think I'm going to do a bunch of grandma calls today because I have a ton of grandma requests here in the request folder. And at this point, they're all just mixed in with other prank calls and stuff because I've taken so long to get to them all. And don't worry, I'm not going to forget. Is What I'm doing is, um, you know, I have my prank request folder in my email. I'm just searching for the word grandma right now to find all of the grandma requests. Hopefully they all use the word grandma in them. And I've got this one here from Justice. He's, I think he might be the first person to email me about pranking his grandma after I issued the challenge. And I called his grandma and I failed at that call. I don't remember what happened. Uh, her name was Yaya. I do remember the name Yaya, but I don't remember how I failed. So he writes back, God damn it, Brad. I thought you were a prankster. I got another challenge for you if you're up to it. This should work out better. My mom's number is, and has the mom's number, she works in the hospital as a surgical tech assistant or some underpaid BS like that. Wow. High opinion of your mom there. Uh, here's my number. 
I will gladly ignore my mom so you can prank her uninterrupted. My voice is slightly deeper than yours, by the way. Tell her I need a loan to start a workers' co-op, which is my dream, and she needs to send it through Bitcoin or some BS. I don't know. I can't do all the work. Thanks for trying. Okay, I'm going to call your mom. You asked for it. Hey, sweetie, it's mom. You're on speakerphone. I'm at work, honey. Okay, uh, this is, actually isn't Justice. Uh, is this Justice's mom? It is. Okay, this is Steve Dave. I'm from Royco Title Loans, and Justice is in here trying to get a loan using your car title. It uh, looks like he, he's wanting to get $5,000 off of your car for a loan to uh, start a workers co-op. And we, oh, okay. we were afraid this might be fraud, so we were just calling to make sure that's cool with you. Right. See, I don't have a car, so that is no. Oh, so this title isn't even real? I, it's not a title of mine. Oh, my sure. goodness. We're going to have to... He, he's out there, like he's out in the lobby. I'm behind the glass right now. He can't hear me. But he's acting all erratic. Like he's got crazy eyes and he's pacing. And he, he's really? like he's like yelling at us. He's like, you better give me that loan because I'm going to start a co-op today. Like he wants to start. Uh, a okay. Um, I, I got to go. But, but then, but then, I but then, ma'am, 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 listen to me. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm trying to tell you something, though. Um, no, sweetie, you don't understand. I work in surgery, and I was in the middle of a surgery right now with people all around me. So I had to break out. I had to wait for somebody to come in and, and break me out because I, I can't talk to you about something important like that in the middle of a surgery. Oh, so, yeah, of okay. course. Well, look, no, look, 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 um, look. I was just kidding about the whole erratic, crazy eyes thing. I'm basically, I'm just mad. Because I'm gay and I asked him out and he turned me down. But like just because I want him doesn't mean I can give him this title loan. You know? You could, especially oh. when it's a fake title. So no, he's he's fine. He's fine. I'm going to give him back his phone. He's just like he's basically just mean mugging me because I turned, turned him down for a date. Or I mean he turned me down for a date. And he's he's mad because I asked. I'm like, look, okay. he, he's like, I don't um, swing that way. I don't even like gay people. Oh, well, he shouldn't say that. That's rude. But yeah, you, you interrupted me at work during mm -hmm. a fucking surgery for this. And here I am freaking out thinking that maybe my son made a bad decision and did some drugs or something. Oh, and no. he just did no, the he's... shit out of me. Like seriously scared the shit out of me to where I literally just popped out of my goddamn surgical gown and out of the room. Hot. But yeah, I just, you know, well, I, was, I was a little what upset. Company, what company do you work for? I'm with Royco Title Loans. And, you know, like, I, I shouldn't have taken it out on you because he turned me down for a date. I was just mad because he was all homophobic about it. But then he still wanted this title loan. Well, first of all, I don't know what title loan he brought into you. I don't even own a car. He does own a car. He has a car. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's. Probably in his Annie Sissy's name. That's not mine. But like I said, you interrupted me at, at a job that is extremely important. And I really well, thought something was wrong with my son. Like, I seriously thought my son, something was wrong with him. So if he's not, well, I'm really sorry he was rude to you because he turned you down for a date. That I, I'm really, really sorry about that. But like I said, I have a very important job to get back to. Well, you know what? My, my job's if important, you, too. I have a very important job. I, I provide I people with I money. Mean, your job is very important, too. But my, my job's more important than yours, probably, because I, I provide people with money to do loans and stuff and, like, to start businesses. I thought something was wrong with my son. I know. Like, it was wrong with my son. Like, you don't understand. Yeah, well, no, I was just exaggerating because he's mean mugging me right now because... Cause like um, I, cause I just cause I asked him out on a date, he's like, I don't swing that way, motherfucker. Well, he shouldn't be that rude. Though. Like I, I agree, know. To be never that's what I said to him. Like that. But the thing is, is I there is a nothing I can do about that, and B, I I am at work. Like seriously, I had to have somebody. Somebody came into my room right now and and took over for me. 
yeah. during a fucking procedure. I'm half tempted to yeah, hang up I'm with right you. Now, hang up with you and then just make a bunch of international calls on his cell phone to re- like run up his bill as revenge for not going you, out with me. That I don't know what your problem is, but you sound like you're absolutely psychotic. I, I don't want you to do anything with my son's phone. And if you do that, I swear to God, I'll have cops come in. This is no. not funny. Like, I don't have time for this. I am at work. Okay. Goodbye. Well, you're, you're yelling at me like he yelled at me. Oh, shit. Justice. I'm sorry. I think maybe I fucked up. But you know what? Who brings their fucking cell phone into surgery? Isn't that some kind of a rule? Like, leave your cell phone out in your locker or something? I called her three times, by the way. So she finally picked up on the third attempt. And yeah, I shouldn't have said that you were behaving erratically. I just didn't know where else to go with it. Oops. I'm sorry. I think I covered that part of it at least pretty well. Justice, you're welcome for that. Your mom doesn't think you're a drug addict now. Just a uh, title car title fraudster that's all so everything's fine i think everything's gonna be just fine okay i just wrote justice an email to try and hopefully he'll you know read it before his mom calls him she probably won't though i wrote i think my prank to your mom worked a little too well she was in the middle of surgery and left because of my call you might not want to admit to her that you set this up she's pretty pissed off I made her think you were on drugs for a minute and she panicked, so I quickly diffused that, but she still left surgery to deal with me, but really, come on, who brings their cell phone with them to a surgery? So I'm really sorry if this causes problems, but that's what you get for making fun of my previous attempt to your grandma. I'm sorry, don't hate me, give your mom kisses from me. Is that good? Is that a good email to send to Justice? Okay, I better send this immediately. Uh, Justice was kind of, um, he was kind of a jerk to me when I failed at pranking his grandma. I don't remember what happened with his grandma. Her name was Peg, if you remember that. He's like, I fucking challenge you, bro. The gauntlet has been thrown. He, um, he sent me a sample of his voice, and I think he insulted me in this, too. Let's see. Hey, Brad. Hey, fucking Brad, dude. God damn, Brad. You failed pretty bad, <laughs> dude. All right, but this is my voice. This is why you failed, because you got that that really high-pitched voice. You have a high-pitched I voice, have, like, motherfucker. This man voice. Yeah, yeah so man, you have a man voice. Yeah. So right. he's given me a sample of his voice so that I could impersonate him, but, I mean, it's his mom. She's going to know what he sounds like. It's not like a grandma who is less likely to know your voice that well. Holy shit, I'm sorry, Justice. I don't even know if I should put this one in the show. You know how if you work in radio, there's this rule that you don't bring your cell phone in or you at least turn your cell phone off? There's like certain places you don't use your cell phone. I think one would be as a radio broadcaster or, you know, at least turn off all the sounds and vibrations and stuff. Another place would probably be the movie theater or in a classroom. I don't know. There's just certain places you don't bring your cell phone. We've had cell phones now for over 20 years. You know, they've been common with regular people. So as a surgeon, don't you just know that you don't bring your cell phone into surgery? Or is that a normal thing? Is it okay to bring your cell phone into surgery? Why would you even need it there? The surgeon's going to be like, uh, hand me the scalpel. And you're going to be like, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I'm getting a text. i got to answer this. It's cool. It's my son. And then she puts me on speakerphone. Why would she put me on speakerphone? Like, that's better. Man, Justice, I hope you're moved out of your mom's house because I think you will be not living with her after today. It's time you get out there and find your own place. Okay, who's my next victim? Uh, I've got a email here from Avery. He says, hey, Brad, my grandma is dead. So here's my grandpa, August, for you to try. He's pretty smart, but I think you could fool him anyway. He has like a million grandkids and he doesn't care at all about any of them. So he's not going to recognize us. Here's his personal cell phone number. Here's his company number. He runs his own business out of a small office. So it will probably be him that answers. I'm a girl, so you should probably pretend to be my cousin Blaze. Blaze? Is that how you pronounce it? Hopefully. I don't know how else it would be. Blaze has a grown man's voice already. Oh shit, I'm fucked. It's never going to work. Uh, He works at a gas station. His mom's name's Michelle. They're also total white trash, and there's a history of teen pregnancy in that part of the family, so it could be a fun prank. Alternately, you could pretend to be the long-lost son of either my Uncle Daniel or Uncle Augie. They're both divorced former druggies in their 50s, so it's plausible. What? Okay, yeah, this is all confusing. I'm getting confused. Avery says, I'm going to go back to playing World of Warcraft in my basement bunker now. Cactus, cactus. Hello. Hey, Grandpa, this is your grandson, Blaze. 
I think you got the wrong number. No, I don't. Bl- yes, you do. Blaze. You know, your grandson, Blaze? Uh, I don't think I'm old enough to have a grandson. Listen here, motherfucker. You are my grandpa. Don't pretend I don't exist. I get enough of that from my parents, okay? I think you gave me a wrong number. Let's try his office number. Hello? Hey, Grandpa, this is Blaze, your grandson. Blaze, how are you, man? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing okay. That's good. What's happening? Um, I'm going to be going to this title loan place here in a little bit. I need to come by your house and get your car title. I'm going to get a loan for a co-op business. Wait a minute. You're doing what? I'm going to, like, you need to get your title out because I'm going to stop by your house and and pick up your car title. Which car? Uh, with the, more, the more expensive one because they'll give me a title loan yeah. on it. And then I can, I can, I can, it, it's, I just need a few thousand dollars. I'm going to start a co-op business and then, you know, I'll pay it back. Don't worry about it. They're not going to take your car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car title. Where is it? <laughs> what? Where Where is the car title? It's the mortgage, the, the loan company has it. Oh, weird. Well, you have to have a copy yeah. of it, right? No. Why wouldn't you have a copy <laughs> of it? Can't, you can't get a car loan. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm saying... You can't get a car loan. Well, uh-huh. well, I, I got to get a, you know, maybe like a, we could do like a mortgage loan at the title company. They said they'll take mortgage papers. I just need to get like four thousand dollars so I can start my work co-op business. What kind of what kind of business are you going to start? Um, it's for uh, marijuana. Yeah, you're going to sell legal marijuana. Well, that's going to be the. On, on on the face of it, it's it's going to be legal marijuana. But you know, I do yeah, some stuff already in, on the back end. You know, selling marijuana yeah. to my friends. Yeah, there you go, man. You're doing good. Yeah, it's true. Okay. So yeah, 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 just need to come by and get something valuable. Like, how much stuff do you have that I could pawn? Oh man, I got lots of stuff. Do you have but most pawn shops? would probably charge you to leave it there. Oh, but um Yeah. So now what are you going to do? Um well, you know, I work at this gas station. Mhm. And I know where they keep the, the key to the safe. Oh. So maybe okay, Yeah, maybe I could just open up the safe after the manager leaves. I work two hours without the manager here. Just open it up. Yeah. And... So you're not taking me seriously with this title loan thing. It's kind of sucks. No. <laughs> so actually, who is this? Oh, this is Blaze. <laughs> it's really Blaze. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I don't believe you. Why don't you believe me? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's have a secret question. My mom's name is um, Michelle. Okay, what's my... See, I win. No, wait a minute. I, I, I... That's not the secret question. Okay. That's not the secret question. What's my youngest son's name? Uh, Augie? Oh, man, you're in trouble. Shit! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> okay. What's okay. happening? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try and scam some other random grandpa. i got to go. Yeah, okay. See you later. I was hoping I could just show up at your house and get that car title and you wouldn't recognize me. Well, I probably wouldn't recognize you. I probably wouldn't. Well, I just, but, you know, I um, hoped you'd think I was this, this Blaze character. Yeah, right, right. So who the heck is this, actually? Uh, I'm a Nigerian scammer. Yeah, okay, right. Yep. A Nigerian scam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I live here in town. Yeah, right. I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like a very good story and one that I would love to, uh, you know, I mean, this you put this thing on, you'd probably sell a million copies. 
with this approach, this story. Put put sell a million copies of what? The book. Oh, this is a great book. It's the I, making of a great book. Well, I never thought of that. That sounds like a slow way to make money. I want fast money. Oh yeah, right, right. Okay, well now that fast money is never easy. Okay. Well, There's anyway, go go die in a fire. I gotta go. Okay. Talk to you later. All right. Love you, Bye. Grandpa. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, that didn't work, Avery. I'm sorry. Apparently, you don't even know your grandpa's cell phone number. Did you give me some other guy's number? Anyway, sorry, Avery. I mean, not as sorry as I am to Justice, but sorry it didn't work out. I didn't make him believe me. Probably because I don't have a grown man's voice. I'm sure that's what Justice would tell you. Here's a grandma request from Michael. He says, hey, Roy, here's a bunch of personal info I shouldn't give out, but I will because I love your show. Wow, you people are so trusting. So his grandma's name is Carol and gives me her phone number and says, hope I'm not too late. My grandma is a batty, kooky old lady. Let me know if you want any more info. Hello? Hello, Carol? Yeah? Hi, this is Suzanne from the AT&T Wireless Store. From AT&T what? Uh, the wireless, you know, the cell phone store. I have your grandson in here. His name's Michael. Yeah. You know Michael? What about him? Um, well, he's, he's switching his phone number with your phone number. No, goodbye. No, he, that's what he's doing, ma'am. Well, shit. Let me try again. Hello? Carol, I, I just needed to let you know your number is going to change. No, my number's not going to change. Yes. And I, what's his name? Michael what? Michael, he's in here in the store. He's swapping his number with your number. I don't have a cell phone number. I know. You've got, it looks like you have Comcast. We're porting it over to AT&T, and then we're going to switch it. No, I don't think so. I'm not going to give my number until my grandson comes and talks to me about it. No, he, he's he's already done it. We've already started it. It's going to change in no, just a minute. No, do not allow. Call the police. Goodbye. Ma'am, it's your grandson. Well, she sounds grouchy, Michael. Let me try one more time. Hello? Grandma, it's me, Michael. No, it's not. Y yes, it is. I'm changing my phone number with yours. We're swapping numbers. I'm going to have... Why? Just, just all the, the kids are doing it these days. They're swapping numbers with their grandmas. So Honey, I, I, don't, be I don't believe it. I, I think this is a crank call. No, it's not a crank call. Uh, your number is going to be the number I'm calling from, and I'm going to have your number. Why, Michael? Because it'll be funny. I mean, it, it's just like a... And we'll, it'll stay that way forever. It doesn't change anything for you. You just have a different number. No, no, I don't want my number changed. No, Michael, you have a cell phone with your dad's your phone number. Yeah, but I already started this. I already started the process. I'm at the AT and T no, store. No, 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 no. They're just, like. It's... I'm gonna talk to you. No, I'm gonna talk to your mom and dad. About no, this. don't don't tell them. They'll get mad at me. Yeah, I am. I no, am. No, no. Come on. No, I don't grandma, believe it. No, please, no. Please, I love you, no. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> I'm going to, here, I, I bet I'm going to email Michael right now. Should I email? Yeah, I'm going to email him right now. There, all done. Everything's fine, Michael. Don't worry. And he gave me the number of a brother-in-law of his and also that person's grandma. And I tried to call it. They wouldn't pick up. So I'm going to save that and try it later. Okay, Michael, I'll try Matthew's grandma later. Whoa, here's one that just came in an hour ago from Rick. He says, not sure if you're still doing this. I'm behind a bit on shows. But you can call my Grammy. Her name is Barbara. Here's her number. P.S. The Cat Cafe episode was fucking hilarious. You killed me. Thanks, Rick. That's crazy that this just came in. I haven't had a grandma request in, I don't know, maybe a week or so. Hello? Hi, is this Barbara? Yeah. Hi there. Uh, this is Carol from the CenturyLink store. Pardon me? This is Carol from the CenturyLink store. Okay. Um, I, I have your, your grandson, uh, Rick, is in here. Uh, he's swapping his phone number with your phone number. Well, I don't remember ordering anything. But oh, no, no, it's your grandson, Rick. Do you know your grandson, Rick? Yeah. 
Yeah, my phone number is right. Your grandson, Rick. Yeah, do you know you, do you have a grandson named Rick? Okay, yeah, he's 36 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's here in the he's here in the here in the store and uh he's swapping his phone number with your phone number. Oh. Here, I'll hand him the phone. G gra um, grandma, it's Rick. Hi. Hey, Grammy. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm going to like your phone number is going to change. I'm going to have your phone number, and you're going to have my phone number. We're swapping them. Oh, okay. Hang on. Why? Okay. I got, I got it in my book. You got what? So I took the book out, and so I'll take down your phone number. Okay, because that's going to be your phone number from now on. That's your home. That's going to be your phone number there at home. It's going to be my phone number. Yeah, we're swapping. I'm going to have your phone number. When people call this uh, 5 number, it's going to ring my cell phone from now on. Hmm. And How come? Just for fun. What? Just for fun. We're swapping phone numbers. We're switching phone numbers? Yeah, so I'll have your number, and you have my number. And you can take all my messages, and I'll take all yours. Oh. Ah. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to remember my phone number then. Yeah, you'll figure it out. You'll, you'll get used to it. Okay, and, and my new number will be 487. One. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. The one I'm calling from. That's your new phone number. How did you do that without my permission? I tricked him. I um I brought in a paper. It with the, okay. it, the I I forged your signature, and I'm like, yep, my grandma says it's fine, and they went ahead and did it. Okay. Okie doke. Is that cool? Well, it's kind of different. <laughs> yeah. So the number will be, four, my number will be 489. Yeah, yep, that's the one. It's going to be your number from now on. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have your number, and um, you'll you'll pay two phone bills. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to pay for my phone from now on. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no. <laughs> that'll be cheaper for me, you know. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I got mine to CenturyLink now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, they're they're able to do it anyway because mine's a mobile phone. Oh, so, okay. So they they're setting it all up. They've. But mine's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they they've got it all figured out. I don't think they'll mess it up. Okay. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this I'm, is four nine. Yeah, I'm going to be using your phone number for my new business. Okay, you know what I got to do tomorrow? What? I got to have my teeth pulled. Oh, fun. Which teeth? Um, There's ten of them. Oh, wow. All of them then? That's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> But, you but know, I'll, get to, I'll, I'll get to eat all the pudding I want and all the jello I want. <laughs> oh, it's, so it's worth it. I should do it too then. <laughs> but I anyway. I should come with you um, and have my teeth pulled. And it's, have, and it's gonna cost, it cost me six, 6000 uh, and some odd dollars. Holy fucking know. shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of money. But they're gonna they're gonna give me a plate or something to put in there. Oh, cool! Hey, and it has it'll have the space for my regular teeth that I'm still keeping. Can, can I have <laughs> Can I have your old teeth that they pull out? Can I have them? You know, I gotta ask. I gotta ask the dentist something tomorrow. Okay. I should ask him if he knows the tooth fairy so that I can get money for my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe you'll get six thousand dollars. <laughs> but no, I, 
I got three hundred and sixty dollars off of the bill. Oh, that's good. Because um, he he told me that since I paid for it already, he said he that they'd give me five percent off or whatever. What a bargain! Yeah, if you don't want those teeth, I'll take them. Can I have them, please? What for? I'm gonna make a voodoo doll. Huh? I'm gonna make a voodoo doll. Oh. With your teeth. Okay. But the last time I had my teeth pulled, they wouldn't. I didn't get money from the tooth fairy, so I guess I'm a little bit old for oh, that now. Oh, okay. Well, that's lame. <laughs> I'll give you money. I'll give you uh, fifty cents per tooth. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> well. It's the least I can do since you pay my cell phone bill now. Okay. Yeah, as long as I'm paying your cell phone bill and you're paying mine. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not paying yours. Huh? Oh, you're going to pay mine, but I but you just had the number switched. Yeah, something like that. I don't even know at this point. I don't oh. know what's going on. I I think I accidentally gave you a number in Canada. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I hope but that. Anyway, I, hope, I will. I will talk at you later. Okay. I hope it's fun getting your teeth pulled. Oh yeah, your mom's gonna come over and she's gonna take me. She or Amanda. Amanda's gonna be at the at her house. Too. Oh good. You can tell. Can you tell mom that um that your number is my number now because she'll get mad if i tell her <clears throat> okay yeah let, let her Not take it out on you tell Tim too. okay that sounds great okay all right love you love you grammy okay bye and we will talk to you later okay think of me when they're pulling your teeth out okay bye i haven't done it what it's going to be 1 o'clock, so I don't have to wake up too early. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk to you again. So how are your kids doing? Um, they're, um, they're, they're doing great. They're just nothing, no, nothing wrong there. Well, that's good. Yep, I just keep telling myself I'd that. I'd like to see them again sometime. Oh, I'll have to bring them you by. get some time out to... Okay. Maybe I'll give him some of your teeth. Okay. Anyway, I love you. I love you too, Grammy. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And we'll mwah. talk to you again. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, bye. I think she was suspicious of me. Maybe. I don't know. Was she, was she Rick? By the way, Tim is uh, Rick's mom's uncle wait an uncle her son is wait no i don't understand this my mom is Teresa, and her son is tim but there's the word uncle in here it's very confusing god damn it rick you're confusing me i think you need to go see your grandma very soon bring the kids with you she misses the kids the kids want her teeth thanks rick here's an email from joshua he says hey there brad this is my grandma's number her name is yuki her husband's name is something that I can't pronounce. She's pretty gullible, will believe basically anything you tell her with enough convincing. I frequently convince her that my aunt has been deported to Ohio, even though she was born in California. What? My name is Joshua, same last name as her. Feel free to use my name. I work at a movie theater that she frequently visits. Do any prank that you'd like to do on her. She will 100% believe any nonsense you tell her. Let's see how well I can fuck this one up. Hello. Hey, Grandma, this is Joshua. Hello? Oh, yes. Is, is this Grandma? Huh? Is this Grandma? What the hell? Hello? Is Grandma there? Who is this? This is Joshua. Who? Josh! Joshua! Josh? Yeah. Those songs are like it. It is. I, I'm at the movie theater. I'm on their phone. Is Grandma Joshua? there? Yeah, is Grandma there? 
Who the rich? You can. I don't know who the Joshua. Who I don't know who the Joshua is. Hello, who are you speaking? This is Joshua from. I'm I'm over at the movie theater. Joshua, the one I know. Yeah, it's Joshua. The one that live over here. Yeah, I don't know what's what's wrong with Grandpa. Jeez. Uh, anyway, hey, um, you need to come over to the movie theater, like right well, away. What happened? I broke the movie projector, and I told him, I told the assistant manager that you know how to fix it. That we need to fix it. Yeah, you need to bring your tools. You need to bring your tools and come over and fix the movie projector. Oh, maybe talk to uh, talk to my husband. No, no, he can't hear. Yeah. Hello, sir. What? Th this is Joshua's assistant manager. My name is Carol. Yeah. Josh broke the movie projector, and you need to come over here and fix it. I'm sorry, Karen. Here's what you're talking about. You need to come over and fix our movie projector, because Josh br Joshua broke it. Pick up a Joshua? Y no, you g put Grandma back. Grandpa, it's me. Put Grandma back on. You you can't hear nothing. Oh, Josh? Yeah, it's Joshua. Hey, who do you want? I broke the movie projector here at work. I broke yeah. it. I need uh -huh. you. I need you to come over and fix it. Oh, oh, Joshua, he's a movie now. I mean, uh, he's working now. No, I. This is Joshua. Joshua. Yes, I broke the movie projector. Yeah. And you need to come over and fix it. Bring your toolbox. I don't know what you're talking about. You need to come Joshua, fix it. Joshua, he's working right now. I'm Joshua. This is Joshua. Me. I'm Joshua. No, I think you got the wrong telephone number. No, I don't. Grandpa, god damn it. Put Grandma on the phone. Put Grandma on. Oh, Joshua? Don't sound like Josh. Yes, um, my wants to know, uh, 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 what, uh, uh, Joshua? Yes, this is Joshua here. I'm going to put my manager on the phone. It's Carol. I'm going to put her on the phone, okay? All right. Hi, this is Carol. Uh-huh. I'm Josh's assistant manager here at the movie theater. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, Josh, Joshua broke the movie projector. It's a... It's a $20,000 movie projector. Yeah. You need to come over and fix it. Oh, we have to go fix it? Yes. You you come here right now. Bring your tools and fix this projector. Or Wait. Talk to my husband. Or Josh is in trouble. Yeah? Yeah. So, so come over right away. We've, we've already had to cancel the matinees. We need Joshua to... not home right now. God damn it. Joshua's right here next to me. I'm his yeah. manager. You need to come over here right now and fix this projector. Who? You. I don't know how to make a, I mean, a fix a projector. Well, you come over here and figure it out. I know nothing to do with my project at movie theater. If you don't fix it, Josh is in trouble. What you talking about? C come over to the movie theater, bring your tools. Oh, where's the, where's the movie theater at? You know where it's at. Well, I don't know where. Yuki comes over here all the time. I know Yuki. I say hi to her. Huh? Have Yuki drive you. You crazy old coot. I feel like you are wrong there number. Goodbye. No, no, I don't. Huh? Grandpa, Grandpa, it's Joshua. Don't hang up. Please come and fix the projector. Who? You! Come over and fix the goddamn projector. Hey, don't call me goddamn you sound like a bitch. Goddamn, goddamn, goddamn. Oh, no. I guess I crossed a line there or something. Hello? I thought he's picking back up.
Well, that was kind of annoying. One of them couldn't seem to understand English that well. The other one was just completely deaf or something. Damn it, Joshua. I hate your grandparents. I hate them. I don't ever want to talk to them again. Hey, look at this. I got some good news in an email. I just got an email from Justice, and he says, She called me quite frantic, LOL. Where the fuck can I hear this call at, Brad? So that makes me happy that Justice isn't, like, you know, super pissed at me or anything. He seems to think it's funny that I got his mom pulled out of surgery. Like, I wonder if it was surgery where the guy was asleep? Or was the guy awake listening to me be crazy at the mom? Either way, it's kind of hilarious. Oh shit, update number two. This is future Brad in the future. I'm doing the post editing now and I just got another email from Justice. You know, he sent me that one email, said she was quite frantic. And I told him I'm editing the calls right now. I'll have it out later tonight. I'll hurry just for you. And uh, Justin just replied to me again. He says, it better be a good one with how frantic she was. She was losing her mind, sounded overwhelmed as hell. Apparently, it was a very stressful day. And that was her. (laughs) And that was her breaking point. I broke a woman today, everyone. She said she will strangle me when she sees me next. Apparently, that call was on speakerphone. And I'm pretty sure the patient heard it. L-M-A-O. So I guess Justice told her that he is responsible, which is amazing. I can't imagine pulling a prank like this on either of my parents or my grandparents or anyone in my family. They would all just hate me for doing something like this. So I'm a little bit jealous that you're able to just fuck with your mom and apparently nothing comes out of it. That's awesome. I think I've had enough of grandmas today, so I'm going to end the show. We're going to do some voicemails. If you have sent a grandma in to me to be pranked, or a mom, or whatever else, I had some people send me all kinds of family numbers to prank. Uh, Don't worry, I won't forget. I'll get to them eventually. As of right now, it looks like I have maybe, oh, maybe I just have like seven or eight that are current. And I've got this one from Craig from 2019, before I even issued the grandma challenge. He wants me to call his grandma as Carol. I tried doing that today and she wouldn't pick up. So I'll definitely try that again. There's some other requests in here that are not grandma challenges. They just happen to have the word grandma in them. And I had a couple that just absolutely will not pick up for me. I ended up deleting those. Uh, I know one belonged to Bird. Sorry, Bird, your grandma won't pick up. I tried her three times over the past month. She does not answer. Hey, Bradley. It's Alaska Jack here. Hello. So, uh, the other night I was on a date with this girl, and we went back to the house or whatever, and I look at her, and I say, well, let me slip into something more comfortable. So I got in my car and I left. Take care. Hey, Arby, it's the duelist. Hey. hey, I was just thinking, I haven't heard the Little Cricket song in a while. Any way you could play that in one of your shows? Maybe. Thanks. Maybe I, I will. This. You know what? I'm going to put that in my show notes right now. There it is. Because I'm not playing it on the end of today's show because I have another plan for the end of today's show, I think. But I will play the little cricket song for you. Hey, Brad, it's Jack from the Internet. Hey, Jack. I was Jack. just curious if you were familiar with Ken M., who is an online troll who posts hilarious fake reviews and questions uh, guaranteed to get uh, some amazing responses online. I don't if know. If you have heard of him, let me know what you think of him. And if you haven't heard of him, let me know if you'd like to have him on the show. I think I can actually arrange that for you. Have him on my time. show? What? Like I do prank calls with him or something? Since when do I ever do that? I should do that, though. I know I should. Hey, Brad, it's Apollo, calling you from uh, Chicago Midway Airport. Found a couple of banks of pay phones. This one is actually by Ameritech. Oh, my God. So that's pretty exciting. We're heading back to St. Louis before too long. But just wanted to uh, see how these sound after all these years. Sounds great. Hope you had a good week, Brad. Bye. <laughs> Let's call it back and see if I get an answer. Ah, oh, it's busy. That's bullshit. Payphones need to have call waiting on them so I can bother people more effectively. Hey, Brad. It's Team Wolf Jesus. Yeah. So, this, I don't know how many people are going to listen to the voicemails, but I do want to say one thing. We are $457 away on Patreon from Brad being at $4,000, which means that he works for us oh, the whole fucking time. And well, said, I pretty much already do. I was just setting that as a goal. Eight hours we're, a day we're there. you would dedicate. Right on fucking Oh, I do right. eight hours a day. I promise you that. At least on average, not in a row. You know, I take big middle-of-the-day breaks and stuff, but 
I do show stuff from morning until bedtime. So now many that's days. That's all you fucking freeloaders on YouTube. I mean, you guys should you, fuck you guys. But that's for right. all of us on YouTube. Patreon, if 450 motherfucking seven of us just donated one extra dollar, Brad would get there. One extra dollar. You hear that, everyone? One extra fucking dollar. We're almost there. Fuck. One extra fucking dollar per fucking month. One fucking extra dollar. Okay, yeah, we get and the point. Only 74 Jesus fucking. fucking percent of us need to donate that extra dollar. Yeah, so donate an extra dollar, all everyone. All people from Patreon, donate one extra dollar. Okay, all right. Thanks, Teen Wolf Jesus. I appreciate it. You're right. Everybody should up their pledge. And all of you people who are going to downgrade your pledge this month, which happens every single month, people downgrade, people upgrade, new people join, people leave forever because they're tired of my bullshit. I'd rather just have a bunch more people support the Patreon. Let's figure out how to get some new people in here and just double the amount of supporters. That's what we need to do. You'd think with all my social engineering shit, I would know how to trick another 2,000 people to listen to the show. Why am I not figuring that out? Hey, it's your boy, Last Place. Hey. Um, that first call in the last episode you did with that gangster guy was so funny. Um, I'm the person that called oh, you like that guy. a few ep- yeah. uh, episodes ago just randomly. Um, and then I think you should do uh, some more Hang Up the Phone. They're always my favorite. Okay, Thanks, yeah. All your content. I'll do more of that. And more tunnels. I should have done some tunnel calls with grandmas today. That would have been fun. Hey, Brad, this is Robert, hey, long-time caller, Robert. first-time listener. Okay. Uh, so, I just finished downloading the, uh, the Phone Losers 2020 torrent. It's pretty awesome. I've been going through a lot of that stuff. Um, but there were mentions of a, of a different torrent, uh, the 58-gigabyte one, I think, was what it oh. was. Um, Which one's that? Is that one still available? And does that one have different content than what's included on this big one let or me does find this out big one incorporate everything from the last torn anyways thanks bye i'm looking on my seed box to see what you're talking about that is 58 gigs oh yeah that's the old prank call torrent from 2014 it is still available you can still download it it's the same stuff that's on this new one but the new one has you know like 10 times more on it that was just my personal collection of prank call stuff which has grown over the years and also Now includes MC Lars' collection of prank call stuff. And that reminds me, did I ever talk about archive.org? I think I did. Jason Scott downloaded the torrent, one of the big shots over at archive.org, and the entire archive is up on archive.org now. I need to put a link in the show notes to that. I think maybe I talked about that in the last show. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I did that, didn't I? And I'll put a link again to the torrent in the show notes. You can find that at worldofprankcalls.com slash torrent. The torrent currently has 30 cedars and 12 piers. That's not too bad. Hey, Brad. It's Jake East hey, of Jake. the Rockies here. Hello. I think I've got that Wuhan flu coronavirus thing. I'm sick, and I never get sick. Wow. I, uh, I don't care. I think that's what it is. But anyways, uh, a few nights ago, nice I was little laying down. tidbit there that has nothing to do with I'm anything. to the show, and I was like half asleep. And the funniest thing you've ever said on a prank call, I cannot seem to find what episode it was on. It's an old one. You had called someone, it was from an HOA episode, and you had said, uh, yeah, we're just calling to find out when there's going to be no one in your house. We just need it for our records. And the, the reactions that you got from people were fucking amazing. Yeah, but that uh, I, I spent about an hour this morning, like, skimming through you know, random HOA episodes, I can't figure it out. Maybe you know. And maybe that's an idea you can do again because it seems to be, like, one of the best, you know, enraging, ass, you know, reactions you can get out of anyone. But, all right, man, I'm going to try to get over this uh, Wuhan coronavirus. Yeah, blues. who cares? Thanks for the voicemail. Uh, I have no idea which show that's from. I don't even remember doing that. It's probably from many years ago. If anyone out there knows, put it in the comments. And by the way, nobody's found that other thing that the other guy was looking for. The smoke another funny cigarette and stick it up your ass quote. Which show did that come from? I kind of wish I was more detailed in the show notes. So we could just search for things and Hi, baby. figure it out. Get fucked and don't dial my number again. What? Give me that number and I'll send you a picture of this big fat wet ass pussy. 
I got oh, good okay. pussy. I got a pussy. It's like a snapping turtle. Yeah. Is this just a recording of somebody or something? That's so funny. Thanks for calling up with that. Cactus, cactus. Cactus, cactus. Cactus. Yeah, what the fuck's this cactus business? Hey, Brad. It's Jose from Minnesota. I hate that I'm from Minnesota, but anyway, I'm here now. I used to be from New York, but who cares? Anyway, yeah, yeah. Danny, I sure don't. I called Danny to tell him that you switched his number over to um, a teenage girl. Her dad needed a new line for her, and um, that 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 just that, that call just ha- has had me rolling nonstop. I just the guy's a character. I am just just blown away. That Monkeying you around with people's accounts. The most funniest things ever. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you for keeping this show amazing. You're welcome. I love you, Brad. You. Ugh. I'm turning off that voicemail. It's creepy. Hey, Brad, it's Gloria. I'm also here with my dad. It's his birthday. Hey, Gloria's dad. Okay, so my dad tried the big five zero, and he came up with this idea. He said, why doesn't Brad just call people, call like a house in a neighborhood and say, all of your neighbors have banded together and voted that you're the hobo of the, what was it? Of the neighborhood. like Hobo of the month. That's what I'll do. You the Hobo Association Award, and you call me on behalf of the town. And then people voted you in yeah. for the Hobo <laughs> Award. It's not that funny. Okay, I hope you got that. And Sorry. I hope you do that. Just make his 50th birthday. I'm being a jerk. Okay, bye. Yep, another idea that I'm going to completely forget about. But if I did that, I'd have to say I'm with the Hobo Owners Association, right? Uh, who you are LOL. and where you're calling uh, from. I'm listening to episode 616. You're talking about putting a mailbox in someone's front yard. You need to remember that the city or county usually has about 15 feet from the road as there is, basically. So you need to tell her, or the next one you talk to, that no matter what they do, you're going to put it there anyway. Yeah. Because you have it right away. I should remember that. That's why I should be able to put up billboards in front of people's house. That billboard's on city property. You can't do anything. All right, let's listen to a couple old voicemails, I guess. Still hey, catching up. RVCP, the serial fisher again. Hey. I'm too poor to spend any money through Patreon right now, but That's I'm going to okay. send something even better. I'm going to send my thoughts and prayers. Oh, thanks. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Hope that helps. Okay. I'm sure it will. What? Help Satan. You're, you're trailing off. I don't know, but he's going to send thoughts and prayers. I appreciate that. You know, if any of you want to just cancel your Patreon subscriptions, and send in thoughts and prayers instead. That'd be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, Roy. This is Steve from Connecticut. Hey, Steve. Um, I just wanted to let you know, uh, my sister died in November of 2018. Whoa. And your show was the first thing after that to make me laugh. Uh, it was a joke about uh, a woman who sold you a dog and you learn that the dog wasn't real because it failed the Turing test. <laughs> I um, don't even remember that. So that really lifted me out of my Are you sure that was me? I wanted to thank you a lot for that. You're welcome. Um, I'm also going to be sending you uh, <clears throat> my stepmother and my father's uh, phone numbers. So I hope now that you know what I sound like, you can maybe do a oh, good I'll job of imitating me. Completely forget. Thanks a lot. By Talk the to time. you later. Bye. I get around to doing that. I don't know if maybe have I done that already? Because this is an older voicemail. This is from February 16th. I may have called them. It may be in my email still. I'll get to it eventually. Oh, look, here's a grandma related voicemail, I think. Brad, I gotta say, I like the premise idea behind calling grandmas and pretending you're part of the family. I think it's a great idea in theory. However, trying to get ideas across to grandmothers on the phone just kind of seems like the equivalence of trying to play Grand Theft Auto 6 in 4K on a Pentium 1 Windows 95 machine. Wait, Grand Theft Auto 6 is out? I don't know, pulling teeth, kind of, trying to even communicate with them. (laughs) You said pulling teeth, and that grandma today is getting all her teeth pulled. That's hilarious. They pretend not to hear half the time, and the other half, they really don't know English like they forgot it. Also, um, like fucking Joshua's grandparents. When you call... Ugh. Or when people call you and you try to pretend like they're hearing your thoughts. I like that, too. I want to expand on that. You put them on hold like you're going to get the manager and you take a bong hit. And then your voice in your head starts to echo. 
and you start to think all kinds of weird high thoughts. That could be fun. Like, I don't know, dogs are just cats, but bigger. Or, I don't know, you come up with just random shit. But yeah. It's funny. Like, I wonder if frogs could be red or something. You what know? if C-A-T Anyways, really spelled right, dog? In a minute. And yeah, I have not forgotten about the whole uh, inner monologue voice thing that I want to do. I still want to put some sort of an instrumental on my soundboard that I can click on whenever I have the inner monologue. Or maybe not even an instrumental, maybe just kind of a sound effect or something. I don't know. But I want to do that. I want to have an inner monologue in future pranks. I think that could be a lot of fun. I can be like JD on Scrubs. Wow, I'm not as far behind in voicemails as I thought I was. Well, I don't know. I guess I played a lot of them today. But I'm nearly caught up. Luckily, there were a few in there today that, you know, they left one voicemail right after the other. So I just got to delete the extra one and pretend it didn't exist. That's always nice. Thanks, people, for doing that. The sponsors of today's show have been Rhino Knife, Boca Recovery Center, Kuraz, Crooked Alligator, and High School Graduate. They support this show on Patreon. They also send me thoughts and prayers, which is even more appreciated than Patreon. If you would like to support the show on Patreon, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers or phonelosers.com slash support. Just $5 a month gets you an extra show every week. I don't think I've done one yet this week. I probably will try and do that tomorrow. That's where I do all the good stuff. These snowplow shows, they're bullshit. They have voicemails in them and long, rambling intros. Hobo sods are short and right to the point. Much easier to listen to. I don't know why anybody still listens to this show. Today, I'm going to end the show with something a little bit different than I normally do. I'm going to end the show with a prank call, which is really going to piss off the people who complain about the voicemails, that they can't just not listen to the voicemails because I might play something after. Eh. Anyway, yesterday, I was on Devin's show for a little bit, the Take Off Your Pants show, which I go on occasionally, and we had this call that was just kind of bizarre and all over the place. It was an old redneck man, like most of the people on her show are. I edited that call together this morning into kind of its own episode of, like, its own podcast, basically. It's called the Pedophile Entrapment Hour or something like that. I can't remember now that I think about it. And I don't know where to put it. She's going to put it on her Patreon, but I wanted to put it out there somewhere, too. I was thinking about just putting it on the feed as its own thing, but nah... I think I'm just going to paste it onto the end of this show. And it's like a 30-minute thing. So the next 30 minutes is going to be something that happened last night where half of it is Devin, half of it is me. I come in as Chris Hansen and tell this guy to take a seat over there a few times. And Carol comes in at some point. There's some dick slapping. There's some crazy redneck logic that makes it okay for him to talk sexy to a 13-year-old. Just wait until you hear this. It's insane. Hopefully you enjoy it. That's what we're ending with now. Here it is. It's a Wednesday night in the Tennessee suburbs. Spring is in the air. And this guy is selling canning jars on his local radio swap shop. Or so it seems. I'm kind of worried about you. Uh, you know, you only being 13 even though your dad says it's okay. But... He might just be here to meet a 13-year-old girl for some very questionable activities. Let's take a listen and find out on tonight's Pedophile Entrapment Hour with Chris Hansen and Rachel Slur. Hello. 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 Hi, how are you doing? Good. Good. I was calling about your, um... Are you the cannon jars for sale? So what was it? Cannon, cannon jars. The Nick, the can, box, the Nick, Nick cannon jars. Oh no, I don't have any more of them left either. Mmm. What do you got for sale? Uh, well, right now I just uh, I don't really have much. All I got left right now is just uh. Well, I don't know. What are you looking for? <laughs> um, uh, well, we we run a side business where we sell used underwear. Do you have any used underwear you're looking to get rid of? No. Uh, we can supply you with the underwear. Uh, and then well, you just uh, wear it for a day or two. Do you work out in the... Do you work out on the farm? Yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, there are women online that would love to buy 
your farm wearing used underwear. And you can make big money off of it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but what, what do you mean? Like, what kind of underwear are you talking about? Well, like, mostly tidy whities um, So, you just wear those while you're working. What kind of underwear do you usually wear? Well, I, I usually, like, kind of, like, uh, well, I really don't even wear any. I just use, uh, I just use my cutoffs, you know, I'm outside with my cutoffs on all the time. Oh, uh, would it be inconvenient for you to wear underwear? No, not really, but... Well, how much do you typically sweat in one day? In one day? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Like, do you get hot? Do you get sweaty? Or, like, do you take a shower at night? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I take a shower every night, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I get outside and start working, you know. I just mm. wear cut off in a tank top and um, walk around barefooted even, you know, and oh. come in and get cleaned up. And... Oh, see, that's nice. These women would love a nice mountain man. Well, I wish you would, uh... yeah, I talked to you earlier, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, uh, wait a minute, I'm trying to think. Are you still gonna? You still want to meet tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever jerk off into your underwear? Yeah. Like how often? I don't wear underwear, but I. Yeah. Do you wear? Are your shorts like jeans? Uh. Well, yeah, I wear, um, I wear, yeah, I wear Levi's and stuff like that. In Do you wear them in the shower? Do you wear them in the shower? No. The shorts? The short shorts? No, uh Why not? I don't know. Would you? Yeah. You'd wear them in the shower? Yeah. I like it. So yeah, can I'm you... <clears throat> Can you go ahead and set up this meeting with my manager, please? Say that again. Let me Talk turn it. Yeah, turn the TV off, please. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Hang on a minute. Okay, manager. Sometimes I can't hear you. I know. Okay, now it's off. All right, here. Talk to my manager, please. Okay. Hello, okay. this is Chris Hansen. Could you have a seat right yeah. over there, please? What was that again? Could you just go ahead and have a seat right over there, please? Yeah. Now, I understand you're interested in meeting my 13-year-old daughter, Rachel. Oh, I didn't know she was only 13. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm setting up the meeting. Uh, where would be a good place for you to meet? Well, <laughs> Uh, 13 years old. I don't want to get in trouble, man. Oh, no, it's fine. Your secret is safe with me. She's 13, but very mature. So, um, uh, do you know where the Dunkin' Donuts is? Uh, we're at, we're at Omac? Yeah, yeah, the Dunkin' Donuts. Yep, over there in Omac. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think where it's at. Uh, I know, I know where the Dairy Queen is at and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, the Dairy Queen would be fine, too. Do you want to meet at the Dairy Queen, then? Sure. Okay, that'd be great. Um, now, my but daughter... She was saying something about coming up here, but she was saying something about going to have a drink. Well, how's she going to go have a drink? She's only 13. Uh, we, she does have a fake ID. I've provided her with oh. a fake ID. Oh. Okay, so... So now, who are you, her dad? Uh, my name is Chris Hansen. So... Yeah, but I mean, are you not a, are you her dad or something? Yes, or yes, what? I'm her dad. Now, she's uh, going to be very interested in having you slap your dick on various things. Or are you hard right now, sir? Not right now, but I was, I was talking to her. Oh, I can put her back on because um, she would really like to have you slap your dick on the telephone. Yeah. Because she wants to judge the size of it and everything before she meets you. And and I'll be listening in the whole time. So just don't worry about me. I won't say a word. I'll just be listening in. Okay, here we go. Uh, Rachel, pick up the extension, honey. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Okay, I'm back here now. 
Oh, finally. Back where? Are you hard right now? No. Oh, you should do that. Make it go. I have you that. ever have you ever licked a back pussy before? Have I done what? Have you ever licked a back pussy before? Yeah. Lick my back pussy, you bitch. <laughs> I will. All right. Yeah, I like doing that. You like licking back pussies? Oh, yeah. Oh, tell me how you do it. Do you snick, stick your nose in the vagine or just in the crack? What do you do? I lick, I lick every bit. Oh, just front to back? Yeah, I lick it all. Do you want to lick my 13-year-old mussy? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I wish I could uh, have you up here. Link on your face or what? Yeah. Mm, yeah have you ever great. have you ever fucked a chicken before? Have a what? Ever fucked a chicken before? Yeah. What kind of a chicken? <laughs> no, I just shit. Yeah. It's okay. I want you to. Yell at me like I'm a chicken. You're fucking. Yeah. Uh, I wanna, I wanna meet you real bad. M e a t. But I'm kind of worried about you. Uh, you know, you only being thirteen, even though your dad says it's okay. But mm. little does he know, I'm only eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Stupid, stupid dad. Anyway. So, so you, now, how old are you really, 13? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wink, 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 wink. Yeah, I, have a fake, I have a fake ID for my dad, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he thinks the only one I have is my 21, but okay. I don't, yeah. And you got, uh, you got big boobs, huh? I do. I got them from... My dad, he bought them for me. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm 13 going on 8. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Mm. Are you hard? Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, how hard are you right now? Uh, yeah, you make me get hard. Like, I'm so young, I look like I'm still in the womb, you know? Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm so, mm, just surrounded by amniotic fluid. Wow. Yeah, it's so hot. Yeah. I'm, de I'm developing right now. You are? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty hot. You like your pussy licked it, huh? That's right. Oh my god, and my and my back pussy. Yeah, I like them both. Yeah. And I lick, and I lick them for a long time too. Ooh, we uh, lick my we lick my for, ass for like seven minutes straight. Don't take oh, any hell, breaths. I'll lick a little longer than that. Mm. <clears throat> I like she like to lick you for hours. Mm. Will you slap your dick on the phone right now? Let me hear how hard you are. Okay. Uh, if you can hear it. Yeah, do it one more time. Okay. One more time. That was hot. Rachel just got another guy to slap his dick on the phone. It's kind of sick. They like to slap their dicks. You would think it'd not be so easy to get guys to listen to a weird chick. But they like to slap their dicks. Rednecks on the phone. 
can't believe they fall for shit so corny. Phone sex orgy. We just heard a guy suck his dick on the phone because Rachel knows lots of tricks. And they like to slap their dicks. As you heard, a mere four minutes after he was just told that he's speaking with a 13-year-old girl, this man whipped out his dick and slapped it on the phone for our plant, Rachel. Let's listen as I jump into the line and confront this sick individual. Uh, that was hot. Hello, sir. This is Chris Hansen again. Yeah. With uh, CBS News. So, um, is this, uh, you know, your sexual acts with a 13-year-old, is this a first-time thing, or uh, how many times have you come on to underage children? Never. Well, it's weird. You, you seem to really be enjoying it right now. Well, yeah, with your permission. Well, um, I, I'm afraid it doesn't work like that. You know, like, I can't just give you permission to be a pedophile. Yeah, and? Well, and uh, it's not cool to be a pedophile. What are you being a pedophile for? She told what are you, you talking about? She told you she was eight years old. But I said, I said, I said she was 13, so. Yeah. So, so that's okay then? Well, not really. You know, like I told you. It's not, you know, no. That's not like, really, like you yeah, told me, I, I gave you permission to have. Yeah, I know you gave me to permission, have, uh, but still. Uh, the law says it doesn't matter, you know. The law says it doesn't matter how old a girl is as long as the dad well, gives the permission. Law says you can't be with anybody under than under over eighteen or under eighteen. Can you explain you know, to me then? Can, can, from, can, can, can you explain to me then why you're slapping your dick on the phone for a thirteen year old girl? Because you told me to. No, I it doesn't work like that. Listen, we're sending these recordings to the police. And do you think that defense is going to work with them? You're just going to be like, well, yeah, well, this guy said he was her father, so so it's totally okay for us to for 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 me to slap my dick on the phone for a 13 year old girl. How do you know it's my dick? Did you see me do it? Well, you're talking sexy to a 13 year old girl. You told you okay. I'm going to read the transcripts here. You said I well, really I like. To, you don't have I to really read it. I know. no no. I have the transcript right here. I really like to lick back pussy. Mm mm mm. I'm a creepy yeah. old man, and I love to lick that back pussy. Mm mm. Mm mm. Mm. That's what you said right here. It's in the transcript. How do you plead? Yeah. So. How, how do you plead? Pedophile or not a pedophile? Not. Well, I don't know. Your actions seem to suggest otherwise. Can you have a seat no, right I'm over not. there, please? I'm just gonna need you to have a seat right over there. See where I'm pointing? Just have a seat. Are you talking to me or what? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You yeah, sick okay. fuck. Do what? You sick fuck. I called you a sick fuck because that's what you are. Why is that? Because she's 13, you idiot. You know what? <laughs> if a dad if a dad gave me permission to have sex with their 13 year old, I'd be like, ugh. Ugh. And what I told, and I told you no too. I Bullshit. said no because you're uh, he's only thirteen. He's yeah. like, right, you got my permission. I said no. Uh, the law says no. But then I talked you into I'm it, and you're like, eight. okay, I'll go ahead and do it then. No, I didn't say it was yes, okay. Yes, you I'll did. Do it. Yeah, and I then said, you started uh, talking dirty to her. You started talking about her back pussy. Well, you were the one that told me to tell her that. You said she wants she wants you to talk dirty to her. That that doesn't make it okay. Maybe, maybe I'm a sick fuck too. Yeah. You don't well, listen maybe. to us. Well, anyway. Well, what do you what do you uh, what do you do? Calling up people and and uh, and trying to get people in trouble? Is that the problem? Well, you're you're on a nationally syndicated radio show tonight, and your voice is going out to over three hundred thousand people across the metro area, and uh, everyone's gonna know that you're a sick fuck that that likes yeah, thirteen year olds. Does his mom listen to the news? Yeah, does your mom listen to the news? Nope. Thank my God for that. Dead. My mom died a long time ago. Oh, okay. What about your kids? What are your kids going to think about you uh, suddenly being a pedophile? 
I don't know. I don't this know is called the, the news or not. This is called the Chris Hansen Entrapment Hour, and you are live on the air. Got him. Yep, we got you. We got you, motherfucker. What do you think of that? Uh, uh, do you want to talk? Agree. Do you want to talk to your daughter right now? We've got your My daughter. daughter's not here right now. We've got your daughter live on the air. Go ahead, daughter. Say hello to your father, the sick guy that likes yeah, to go ahead. slap his dick on the phone. Yeah, come on. Daddy? Let talk. Hello? Let me talk to your daughter, my daughter. <laughs> hey, hey, Daddy, what are you doing? <laughs> Funny. Yeah, it was hilarious. We're we're just what having a good old meet me and everyone here at the radio station. We're having a good laugh at your expense because you're a you're a sicko. Uh, uh, I guess you must be one too then. I don't think so. That's not how it works. Pervert. Is that how it works? If you're a sicko, then everybody well, else is too. Calls, anybody that calls somebody up and has your uh, has your thirteen year old daughter. Talking like that on the phone after you have to be a sick motherfucker yourself. Yeah, well, at least I'm not talking sexy to the 13 year old like you are, you sick fuck. Well, you must be, uh, you must be talking. Well, if you're talking, uh, so you let her talk to me like that and let me talk to her like that, so that means you must be fucking talking to her the same fucking way. Anyway, I'm going to leave you. Probably fuck her yourself. I'm going to leave you two alone again, and and you can have your way with her. I give you my permission. Here you go, honey. No, no, I'm <laughs> not going to have your permission Hello. if you're going to pull that shit on me. Hi. Put me on the fucking news and crap. No, oh, you're going to be on the it's... news. I promise you that. You will be on the news. Okay, yeah. fine. So I don't want to talk to her no more then. You have to marry me now. So that's the only reason that you don't want to talk sexy to her is because you know that we. Well, what for? Tell him he has to marry me now. Well, we already have a recording of the whole thing, sir, so there's no yeah, getting no, out of it. Yeah, but why would I want to talk to her anymore? Well, I mean, you may as well at this point. You know, what? what's why? what's it going to hurt for you to just talk to her a little bit more? Well, it's not going to okay, hurt Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to get off the line. I'll be listening. Here you go, honey. No, I'm not going to be uh, talking to okay. her about anything. Hey, come on. Oh, uh. I thought we I thought we had a good relationship going here. No, hell you know. You think I'm going to fucking be with somebody that's going to pull shit like that and, and try to set me up? What? Well. It's not what me. That's my, well, that's, that's my... Well, that's my dad. Me the, put me on the news and all that shit. Well, 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 don't listen to him. Come on. It was... Psh, don't listen to him. I just did. <laughs> I know. Well, he wouldn't give me the phone back. It was rude. It was very rude. <gasps> it was so rude. The only so way I'd meet you now is you and your dad's got to come up here. My dad's got to come too? Well, yeah. Aww, why is he going to come? Because I want him to. Are you going to hurt him? No, I ain't going to hurt nobody. Don't you know, hurt, him. hurt him. We ain't going to hurt nobody. I, I don't know. To, you just sound angry. I just want him to be here, too. I'm not going to, uh, that way, I'm not going to have you come up by yourself and then go back and say, I, I did some fucking bullshit to you that I never done, you know? Well, that's um, fine. He said he was going to watch anyways. Uh, nah, not, not unless he's up here. Yeah, we're, we'll both come up there. Do you have a closet he can hide in, or? <laughs> Do I got a closet? Oh, yeah. All right, well, can he see out of it, or? Oh, yeah. Okay. What if he sneaks up and tries to put his sweet penis in your butthole? Him putting his penis in my butthole? I don't think so. You're not into that? No. Uh -uh. Sometimes he sneaks up. He's like a ninja. He wears all black. <clears throat> he has all black, but then there's like 
a little hole by his penis and it's just cut out and he just sneaks around with his boner and like tries to have his way with my men. It's weird. Uh, well. No, not me. Would you have a sword fight with him with your penis? Say I would have a what? A sword fight. No. <laughs> It's not, it's only gay if you kiss on the mouth, you know. No. All right, well, are you getting hard right now? No. Why not? Because, I, what for? Can I put my penis in your butthole? Uh, this, no. This Big old clit I got. Uh, yeah, right. It's so huge. No, it really is. It's big. <clears throat> it's like the size. It's like the size of Andre the Giant's thumb. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know who he is? Yeah. He's a big man. And he had big motherfucking thumbs. Okay. This shit slaps my thighs when I'm walking down the road. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hello, sir? Sir, what? hello? Hello, sir, my name is Carol. I'm, I'm the producer of the, uh, on News Channel 5. Um, we do this, this, uh, the show, uh, every, every Thursday night. It's called Pedos Five. Pe Pedos on Five. That's what we call it. Pedos on Five on News Channel Five. So we're going to be airing your segment of the program tomorrow night at 5 p.m. And we're wondering if you would like to come on and defend yourself. Because we're going to be come on and do what? Defend yourself. Because we're going to be broadcasting your name and where you live and everything to the listening oh, audience. Well. Alright, well, you go right ahead, okay? Okay, well, would you like to come on and defend yourself and, and try to explain to our listening audience how it's okay to talk sexy to a 13-year-old when uh, Chris Hansen says it's cool? Uh, well, you're the one that's talking sexy to me. Oh, no, no, I, this is Carol. I'm a different person. The other person, that's, that's Rachel. She's the 13-year-old. And I, and I, how old are you? Oh, I'm 39. I'm, I'm, I'm the producer for the the pedo, oh. the pedos on five on News Channel Five. Uh, all right, well. Pedophiles on five. So all that, right, well you take care. Well, no, that's the name of our show. I'm gonna put Rachel back on. Here we go, Rachel. Hello. Yeah. Just tell him yes. I don't know what you guys are up to. And why you called me, anyway. This is just, you know, have you ever done role-playing before? Done what? Role-playing. No. Oh, like, it's kind of like if I were to <laughs> dress up as a, a naughty nurse or something, and, you know, you were to dress up as a perverted old man that likes to have sex with 13 year olds? No. No? No. Why not? Because. Because why? Because I just don't want to. But you did earlier. Why have? Why did you uh, change your mind? Because you just changed everything for, uh, for what you just said, you know? Turn me in and all that stuff, or for something that you you tricking me into saying. I just want you to be on my show. Is there anything wrong with that? With what? Being on my show. No. Yeah. Well. Just but, talk. Uh, to like I said, you're <laughs> only thirteen. Look, bitch. Talk to my producer, and give give her the rights to this. Hello, sir. 
This is uh, Steve. I'm the program director here at News Channel Five. So we're gonna be using a, we're gonna be using a photo of a photo of you on the news channel. So you know, just put a photo of you up in the corner. <laughs> I got fuck it up. <laughs> you ever heard that song? You ever heard that song? Killing my boner. <laughs> I'm the boner killer. I'm C- <laughs> Chris Hansen, the boner killer. Oh my god! Hold on forever. A little creep. I love it. <laughs> Have you heard the dick flapping? What's with rednecks phone fapping? They want Rachel to have phone sex Because it reminds them of their ex They need to sanitize their phones Cause they like to rub their dicks on the keypad It's really kinda sad Rachel just got another guy to slap his dick on the phone It's kind of sick they like to slap their dicks. You would think it'd not be so easy to get guys to listen to a weird chick. But they like to slap their dicks. Rednecks on the phone seem really horny. I can't believe they fall for shit so corny. Phone sex orgy. We just heard a guy slap his dick on the phone because Rachel knows lots of tricks. And they like to slap their dicks. The Pedophile Entrapment Hour, also known as Pedophiles on Five, was created using clips from the March 11th, 2020 episode of the Take Off Your Pants show with Devin Anus Tart. Be sure to tune in to Devin's show every Wednesday evening at Mixler.com slash Devin Anus Tart for lots of dick slapping fun. That kind of worried about you you know, you're only being 13, even though your dad says it's okay, but... Little does he know I'm only eight years old. <laughs> 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 stupid, stupid dad.